Welcome to Excel Magic Tricks 1794. And in this video, we want to see how to look up the cell address for the max value. Well, the first thing is, let's add some conditional formatting. So I highlight all the numbers, go up to the Home tab, Conditional Formatting, Top Bottom Rules, Top 10. We'll change it to 1 and use Custom Format, something like Fill Red Font White. Click OK, click OK. So now we can visually see that that's what we're after. But we want the address B32. Well, we first need to find the max value. So we'll use the max function. If we enter that, we get the max value. Now I want to look up the position of that max value. So we'll use the X match lookup. The lookup value is the max value, comma, lookup array, that same range. The default is exact match, close parentheses, and that will give us 29. Well, we actually need 32. F2 will add the row of the column header or field name. That will give us 32, F2. With that 32, we can construct an address using the address function. There's the row number, comma, and we need the column number. And this one, we just, wherever this column is going to be, that'll deliver a 2 right now. If I close parentheses and Control Enter, there's our B32. Now F2, the address function, is nice. If I use the third argument, comma, I put a 4 to show it as a relative cell reference. And Enter. Now I have B32. Now actually, we could probably make this same formula a little bit better. If instead of putting the range, let's just put the whole column. That way, XMatch will find the actual row 32. So we'll do it for both. And then we do not need that little bit. And there you go. That one's even better. Now I want to use a lookup function that's not XMatch. We could use index or XLOOKUP. And I want to look up the max value. I'll use the whole column, close parentheses, comma, within there to get a match, comma, and this to actually retrieve the value. Now, right now, all it's going to do is look up the actual value. And that would be silly, because we could just use the max function. But guess what? Lookup functions like XLOOKUP and INDEX, if you put them in the context of a cell reference or a reference, the function actually delivers the cell address. So all I'm going to do is use the cell function. Now there's a bunch of options, and I want the first one, address. So I'll hit tab, comma, and notice the screen tip says reference. That means XLOOKUP is now sitting in the context of a reference. So it's not going to look up the value, close parentheses, and Enter. It'll look up the actual address. Now I'm going to leave those dollar signs there. We could use substitute to get rid of them. But I'll leave them there. Another option is to use the let function, define those as values. This will be the address. And then we can use the address function. I'm going to say, hey, give me the row of the XLOOKUP address, comma, now the column of A, close, and then 4 for relative cell reference. And that will work. We could also do the same let formula, but instead of using XLOOKUP, we could use the old school index XMATCH, which is new school, and MAX. Now I went ahead and hit pause and then created these old school formulas. So you don't have to have Microsoft 365, and also did the substitute around cell. Now what if we have a duplicate? Well, lookup functions are programmed when there's duplicates to only take the first one. Now, to deal with the duplicate problem and also an added complication, what if we have numbers in both columns and rows? To deal with both of those, we'll build a different type of formula. I'm going to Control Z on that dupe. All right, we'll use the let function because we're going to have repeating formula elements. Alt Enter to add a line in our formula. The values, that'll be variable V, comma, columns and rows. 
That's the formula element. That's the variable name for that formula element, comma, alt, enter. And I'm going to define t as an array of trues and falses saying where the max value is, comma. We'll use the max on the values. And ask the question, is the max equal to any of the values, comma, and alt, enter. And I'm going to see what this t delivers close parentheses, and Enter. So there it is. There's a true. Now I want to multiply this array times the actual row number and then the actual column number. So in the top cell, backspace, backspace, we're going to call the next variable r for row. And I want to say that array of trues and falses, we want to multiply that by the actual row values from the original set of values, comma, Alt, Enter. Let's see what R delivers, close parentheses, and Enter. Sure enough, there's a 16, because that max value is in the 16th row. In the top cell, F2, backspace, backspace, and this variable will be called C, comma, the array of trues and falses times column of the original values, comma, Alt, Enter, and we'll see what C delivers. And sure enough, that's the 10th column. Now, let's just see what happens if we add a dupe right here, Enter. Well, we get column 9 and column 10. And if we look at what R delivers, row 31 and 16. By the way, there's some rows hidden right there. But the key thing is, notice that the two row numbers are in exactly the same position as the two column numbers were. That will help us inside the address function. So F2, backspace, backspace, and let's try address. And right in row number argument, I'm going to put an array of values where it'll get all of the zeros, and in our case, the 16 and the 31. Because we put an array of values in there, address will deliver an array of answers a cell address for each one of the values in this delivered array, comma, and C for column, comma, four, close parentheses. Now, this is going to be a mess, but we'll look at it. Enter. Look at that, I31 and J16. But I don't want all those value errors, F2. So let's just use, and I don't get to use if error very much, but I'm going to use it here. If there's an error comma, please give me, and I'm going to use the formula syntax for nothing, double quote, double quote, close parentheses. And look at that. Now we have these two little floating cell references in the top cell, F2. Now we can use text join. The delimiter, that's what's going to separate the two cell addresses, in double quotes, comma, space, in double quotes, comma, I definitely want to ignore empty, or in our case, the double quote, double quote. You can put true one or leave it omitted, comma. I omitted it. That's the text. I come to the end, and when I hit Enter, that is a thing of beauty. If I change this to three, it delivers just a single cell reference. And if I have three duplicates, it'll tell me exactly the cell address. Now, we could also test this one over here. Notice we use the let function, F2. All I'm going to do is temporarily highlight these values. And sure enough, it'll work for a single column also. Now, Control-Z, Control-Z, Z, Z. Now, if you don't have let, here's a formula using text join and some repeated formula elements that'll work in 2016 or later. All right, that was a lot of fun looking up the cell address for the max value. This one's going to work on a two-way range or a single column. And then we saw a bunch of different examples when we have a single column. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. All right, we'll see you next video.